What's going on, everybody? All right. I just learned something. On this radio here, I have not changed the firmware. This is a brand new radio. I programmed it one time and didn't really used it. And so I thought, what the hell? This thing won't transmit anywhere except for 2 meters and 440. And so if you get one of these and you, you plug it in to chirp and you read it on chirp, let me see if it's still pulled up. There it is right there. Okay. Here's chirp. I've got everything in here. Oh no, sorry, wrong radio. Let me go ahead and rescan this and show you what I'm talking about, though. Let me make sure when you plug this damn thing in, you're fully seated. Sometimes it, it wants to hang right here. See this? I had to clearance that. A lot of radios, it won't plug in correctly. You'll think you hear it click, okay? But it's not really all the way in there. Okay. Get that flash off. All right. This is a file we pulled up on the <clears throat> other radio, Bofang. We're going to go Quanshang. So we probably have to come in here. And we have to probably come in here and open it up again. Because they never close it out all the way. Download from radio. I might have to order another data cable too. Because I've been like. Wiggling the cable. and I don't know. It seems like. It's like hit or miss. Whether it's not even going to work. You know. And uh, Windows made all my old cables obsolete. Okay, so you see here, you get 220, this and that. Let me go here and add one, since we're in here. We'll go, uh, 2235. That should be simplex. Channel 1. 1. Four, six, five, two. Okay. I'm trying to remember what the frequency is. Four, four, six, two, I think. Four, four, six, two. Okay. And... Let's go ahead and we'll upload this to the radio. Upload. So, the radio software will appear that it is writing 220 frequencies, but you won't be able to transmit. And if you go into here, into your settings, there's basic settings. Nothing really special here, like on some of the other radios. I don't know what unlock settings are. Okay, unlock settings show all these other things. This F-lock thing was on. Okay, what this will say, it'll say FCC, CE, GB, 430, 438. Okay, you want to set this to off, okay? Because if it's not, it doesn't matter what these other ones say. Um, now, I didn't realize what the F-lock was. I just thought, well, it says unlock 200TX, 500, 350, etc., etc. So I thought, well, it's all there. Um, so, 
Anyway, I couldn't figure it out. It wouldn't transmit. All right. So let's grab the radio here. We'll unplug it. Let me show you what you do if you don't have access to the computer or whatever. Hold these two buttons down here. Turn it on and hold it down. It brings you into that menu. There's your 350TX. There's your F-Lock. Okay. Click that. It's going to go through the different ones. Just turn it off. Okay. This is a different menu. It's uh, items 57 through 51 through 57, I guess, or 52. Welcome okay. See if I can get it from here. <laughs> okay, hold on. I did it in the house earlier. It's like, what the hell? Okay, but you can see it's transmitting. There we go. Okay, so that uh, repeater is, uh, oh, I don't know, probably 20-something miles away, maybe, if you drive there. Probably 10 if you fly there. So anyway, I saw a couple other videos. Uh, even this guy here had one, and the uh, Australian guy had one, and some other people had one, and... Um, also saw, interesting that they claim that this version of the radio is better than the K6. Well, this guy claims it is. He says that Hayden, the Australian guy, says it is. And I don't know. I've always had a K6. K6 was my first one, and then I bought the regular K5. So, here, well, let's look this up while we're at it. Identically, the receive audio on the K6 is greatly improved over the original K5. Another bonus is that TX audio is absolutely perfect with the K6, and it is loud, clean, and clear. Okay. These are your customer reviews. Um, why would they say that the K6 is better? Okay. So it's a K58 is what it really is, I think. Anyway, uh, now, if you haven't seen this before, I'm not sure if this is going to show us this, but um, donate. All right. Found online, but very careful when modifying. Okay. 228 microwatts. Milliwatts. Uh, interesting. What, what are they talking about? Found, uh, let's see, 412 milliwatts, is that, I don't know, is that, what is, that the rating doesn't make sense to me, is that like 2.6 watts? I don't know. This doesn't make sense. So I'm not sure what he's saying here. 
I know, a milliwatt's a milliwatt. I mean, you know, what the hell are they trying to say? That the radio only puts out this much? That doesn't make no sense. Okay, let's get off this damn page here. Um, the uh, thing I was going to say was, uh, basically, you can program this radio from the web browser, okay? Uh, you just search UBK5 update, pretty much, and um, you probably will go to GitHub, okay? So GitHub, we usually have various different ones. Um, and it'll be different people. Guanchang UVK5 firmware. Uh, build your own firmware. UV mod. Um, let's see. Um, so you can do lots of weird stuff though, but this isn't where I'm trying to look. Okay. Multifunction K5-6 firmware. I don't know who this one of 11 is. Who's that is the one that I've seen originally. And this fag chi thing, whatever the hell, it sounds terrible. E.G. Zoomer. Um, so these are links. and the, GitHub is kind of complicated and multi-layered and sort of hard to understand. Uh, replacing the EEPROM. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Is there more than one of these or something? Uh, two, two megabit or one megabit. So there's lots of weird stuff here. The firmware is based on a modification and merges of multiple open source firmware. Um, some of this is just like what it supports. Uh, I don't know what this larger EEPROM is. Operating instructions, single press. So when you do a lot of things, it'll change. I don't know what the hell. Huh. It would be nice if there was a little bit more clarification as far as like what this is. Okay, examples of what? I don't know. So the problem with this radio is you can screw it up in a heartbeat by basically flashing firmware to it. Um, the um, SSB firmware. There, it, it is possible to pick up sideband on this radio, uh, but it it's a little iffy and a little bit uh, hard to hear. So... Uh, One of these ones here is a web page that has some other stuff on it. So you can definitely, you know, search around and do some reading. And uh, yeah, there's there's lots of stuff. 
I haven't messed with one of these in about a year. Well, no, maybe not quite. About like nine months. So, I'm sure a lot has changed. Firmware back up in mod. Okay. So my other radio has the EG Zoomer thing on it. And it's honestly like I've only used it a few times because it was just a pain to try and like understand it. So that's why when I bought this radio, I basically just left it the hell alone. Yeah, see these ones are from December 14th of last year. And so... Uh, let's see here. I mean, you're just really going to have to do your research on this radio before you go screwing around with it because, like I said, I haven't really messed with mine in about a year, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys that to get on 220, you know, I mean, the other stuff is cool, whatever, but, like, you know, it's experimental. I just don't know what the hell I had found. It's just, it's all like, in my opinion, not very organized, but that's why it's free. So, um, usually there'd be uh, firmware. Let's see here. Two months ago. Uh, RT590, uh, these are other versions, um, RT600, these are other uh, Radtel and uh, Quan Shang type of radios, K5 version 2, so that's from last year, so anyway, there's just a lot of crap in here, and most of it's over my head, so you know, you got the... Uh, UV mod kitchen. Let's see. I don't know what this would be. Um, you can do a lot of changes to the radio, like fonts and things like that, and uh, battery icons, and it's all right here. So you would pick the different ones that you want, and then you'd have to like create your own custom ROM and. It's is the like the repository. You see this right here. This is pretty cool. The old uh, you know computer uh, binary type of numbers from back in the day. Uh, that is actually very cool. What is it called? The Do Seven Hundred font. And so, like, if you click on this. Let's see, what does it give you? I don't know how to even get to it from here. So, if you're bored, this is a good place to just sit and read up and learn about stuff. And then if you can't figure it out, somebody else has already made a video on it.